Yeah. Right. <laughs> I know they're there, but <laughs> the question is. We need to can figure we, it out. Right. And it may be possible, so. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Karen. Uh, any other comments, questions? Jeff? Jeff, would you mind using the microphone? They, they just can't hear you on the TV, okay, I know. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of reading a little bit into what some of the comments you made going forward, um, just trying to think, hopefully. The, uh, you can't predict snow and ice and, and state budget allocations and so forth, but <clears throat> long-term bu um, enrollment projections, do we see some hope down the road that we might, as enrollments, is that what I'm reading into this, enrollments mm -hmm. are slightly decreasing going forward? Mm -hmm. it, it's so that, slight so, so that might be some hope to recovering some of these operating budget deficits or adding some of these programs by keeping our budget somewhat the same, but maybe replacing, for example, salary with programs or something like that. I'd like to say yes, but our Chapter 70 funding is predicated on enrollment. And when enrollment goes down, Chapter 70 funding goes down. Um, of course, it's much more complicated than that, but um, we don't want to be losing too many students in the district. And I think it's, it's tough, Jeff, too, because what we do is we really scrutinize the class size at each of the elementary schools, and we look at the number of each class, and we try to stay within our, our goal of having, you know, basically 22 students in a class for the most part and maybe a little bit more as you get into the fourth or fifth grade. But what happens is you can't get a, you, you can't get a perfect balance because it's three elementary schools. So sometimes there may be uh, a second grade class with uh, averaging 19 students in, in three, three grades. And then at the Hood School maybe it's 22. So in order to actually balance it and maybe save a teacher, sometimes you have to redistrict or do some spot redistricting. And I think we're actually, contemplating just not redistricting but asking some volunteer spot redistricting so we can balance out the classes and maybe save one teacher across the district so we've we've looked at all those things and the superintendent mm -hmm. is is diligently looked at those things to see if we can and that was part of i think the reduction that she showed you absolutely was reducing an elementary school teacher based on that type of balanced enrollment so that's correct and three years from now we'll have enrollment suddenly start to increase well, it, it's, it has leveled off. I mean, I, I, I go back, and Maureen knows this, but back in 91, 92, I think the enrollment was around 1,800, and I think it got up as high as 2,700. Yeah, that's it was over. incredible. Yeah. And that's the other thing when people ask you about your budget. I mean, just accounting for that type of enrollment increase, never mind Proposition 2.5 and, and inflation and everything else, but to go from 1,800 to 2,700 students over a period of about, well, it was less than 20 years, mm -hmm. and then maybe have it level off, but that, that's a lot, uh, that's a lot to account for, so. Any other questions, comments? Okay, that closes the uh, public discussion on the budget. I wanna thank everybody for being here, especially the Administrative Council, giving up your evening. Uh, thanks again, and um, we're pleased, uh, as I echo Deanna's statements, as, as uh, difficult as it is to, to be satisfied with the Level Services budget, it is nice to be at this point in time with a $44,000 unassigned deficit as opposed to the 1.2 million we were looking at back in January. So it's, it's very gratifying. And again, I wanna thank the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee, in particular the Town Administrator as well, uh, for their assistance. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will go back to the, uh, the agenda now, and uh, next on the agenda under uh, continued business, and this is gonna be under continued business for a long time. It's the MSBA SSBC update, and I'll ask the superintendent, and then maybe Cliff to make some comments on that. Thank you. Yes, the last SSBC meeting was held on Tuesday, April 10th at 6.30 p.m. Um, the CM at risk was selected and approved by the SSBC at this meeting, and Gilbane Building Company out of Boston, Mass., was the successful candidate. An initial orientation meeting was held at their offices on Thursday, April 19th, and Mr. Bowers did attend. So I'd like to ask him at this time if he would like to make any comment on that meeting. Uh, it was a very productive meeting. Well, there was a lot of introductions, of course, but then in addition to that, we went over some of the uh, alternatives that they had uh, thought of as scheduling, um, and uh, that was, again, very productive, um, very, uh, very good meeting. Good. 
On Wednesday, April 18th, I, um, the middle school principal, the middle school assistant principal, the supervisor of building and grounds, our OPM, and Doran Whittier uh, participated in a preliminary meeting regarding the phasing that will be taking place at the middle school beginning this spring. Um, no final decisions were made, but the conversation has begun, and the CM at risk will play a very important and significant role in this phase of the project. And today, um, representatives from Gilbane did come to the middle school, and there was a meeting um, here on site. Again, Mr. Bowers attended, Mr. Carucci was there, members, um, representatives from Doran Whittier, as well as PMA Associates, and we had a chance to meet representatives from Gilbane and have some preliminary conversations about moving forward. And then there was a walk about this site, and Mr. Bowers participated in that. We, uh, we went around the site and looked at the uh, movement of the modulars. The uh, contractor that put the modulars in was uh, on scene and uh, will probably be the same contractor that will move them. Uh, and uh, we looked at the site, thought about some of the issues, a lot of photographs were taken, uh, measurements were taken, and, and uh, that looks like it's uh, scheduled to move right along. They even came up with some ways to save money in the process. So. It's a good start. <laughs> it's doing good so far. It was. And they will, um, they being uh, Gilbane, will be putting together um, a projected timeline for when all of these changes will take place and once that is finalized we'll be presenting that to the committee. They have also talked about uh, making sure that there are neighborhood meetings that are held in order to keep our neighbors appraised of the work that is projected to take place, that has taken place, and to also engage our neighbors in conversations around any concerns that they will have. So I, I left the meeting today feeling like they definitely have our best interests at heart. Definitely. We have, we have the right team on board and they've started work already. Geotechnical engineers conducted borings here at the middle school and at the high school during April vacation. It was interesting. Just out of luck they didn't hit oil. So. <laughs> um, at the meeting, invoices were submitted by Dora and Whittier. They were reviewed and approved and the next SSBC meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, May 8th, beginning at 6.30 p.m. in the Modular High School cafeteria. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, any other comments, questions regarding the SSBC? It feels real now. It does now. <laughs> it does feel real. <laughs> Amazing. Um, next on the agenda, the school committee self-evaluation. Um, the evaluation subcommittee was doing some work on revamping that. And uh, Karen, do you want to speak to this? Just that your forms are due to me, and thank you for those who have given them to me. Thank you so much, Jerry, for giving me your form. Mine's already in. I know. Dr. Sunday. Okay. And you're going to evaluate our evaluations? And so she's going to compile. Yes, I'm going to compile them, and Mr. Bowers is going to look at the composite scores, and we're going to make some preliminary um, assessments about where the there were some discrepancies, and then we'll evaluate ourselves in public session. So exciting. That's all. All right, we're taking a chance. Yeah, it's evaluation. It's, it doesn't get very much sexier than that. All right, thanks, Karen. It'll affect our pay. Uh -huh. Yes. It affects our pay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, no one on TV Believe it or not, Jeff, it's hard to actually give yourself a good, <laughs> when you're looking at it, you're going, oh, geez. <laughs> Actually, as a committee, we, we can be very hard on ourselves. The only one that can correct my own paper and get a C. <laughs> I'll point out, though, that there are very few committees that, that do self-evaluations, even though we're encouraged to look at whether or not we're consistent in our responsibilities in discharging them. So I think it's a great, great thing. It all depends on what you de define uh, the term success <laughs> as. All relative. All right, next on the agenda, policy manual review. And we have several sections that have been reviewed uh, by the policy subcommittee. Uh, I think we re reviewed section F of the policy manual. There were no recommended changes to the section. Um, is, is that pretty much correct, policy subcommittee people? That's correct, <laughs> okay. yes. So the names, you know, we're just updating names. Okay. So really no changes. Uh, we do want to indicate, though, on the policy that it, they've been reviewed at this time. So, That's correct. Um, I, I think... May we take a vote just to say to, to vote to uh, um, update? Uh, update. Just, and, so I'll uh, make a motion to update section F of the policy manual. 
to reflect review. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion by Karen. We have a second by Cliff. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries by a vote of five to nothing. Uh, policy subcommittee also reviewed section H of the policy manual, and again, I think there were no recommended changes to this section. Um, I'll make a motion then to um, <coughs> update section H of the policy manual to reflect that we reviewed it. Second it. Okay, we have a motion by Karen, second by Cliff. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries by a vote of five to nothing. And now to show you that they were actually doing something, we have uh, a copy of the revised policy JCJCR student behavior and regulations. Um, does either one of you want to speak to that, uh, to the changes? Well, I think that this, uh, that maybe the superintendent would be the most appropriate person. Okay, because there are some significant, uh, fairly extensive changes. Significant extension, extensive and changes. They, they came down from on high. Yeah, and I think part of this was as a result of some, obviously, situations we've had fairly recently That's correct. and meetings that you had with legal counsel. That's correct. Okay. Exactly. Close yes. Thank you. Um, so what has been recommended to you, um, as Mr. Venazzi had just indicated, was a review by counsel on making recommended changes to the student behavior code regulations. No changes are being recommended to the actual policy, but how we implement that policy would be changed as in bringing this um, regulation more in line with the uh, Mass General Law under the Ed Reform Act of 1993. So in your packet, you can see a red-lined copy of the Student Behavior Code. Um, it is timely, um, as Mr. Venezia said, we had used this policy or the regulations earlier this year, and it became evident that revisions were needed. And this behavior code is included in the high school handbook. And so it's very timely for us to bring this forward to you as the handbook is now under development and revisions are being made. So it's very important that we move through the first and second readings at this time. So I can walk you through the red line changes or I can entertain any um, questions that you may have. But I'd be happy to walk you through at this particular time. Um, you can see that a lot has been taken out of the regs to be more in line with MGL. Um, on the first page under JCR, under disruption of school, under the first sentence, um, there has been an addition. No student shall intentionally, and what's been added is, or recklessly cause the substantial and material disruption or obstruction of any lawful mission, process, or function of the school. And under that same section, at the end, um, the attorney did recommend that we strike from the record from his urging to finish the sentence. Neither shall a student urge other students to engage in such conduct if a substantial and material disruption or obstruction is reasonably certain to result. And then strike from his urging. Next section, under physical abuse of students, school employees are persons not employed by the school. Again, there's a recommendation to insert the words or recklessly to read, a student shall not intentionally or recklessly cause or attempt to cause physical injury or intentionally behave in such a way as to cause physical injury to any student, school employees, or person not employed by the school, either on the school grounds or during a school activity, function, or event off school grounds. It is recommended that we strike this sentence. Self-defense is not considered an intentional act under this regulation. And then in, um, insert the following sentence. Students who violate this code may be subject to expulsion under MGL Chapter 71, Section 37H. And that is the section that was added under the Ed Reform Act of 1993 and provides all the duties and responsibilities to the building principal. Jay, can I ask a question sure. on this? No. So, so the way I read this is, um, what, I, know, I, know, I know how hypothetical is a terrible, Superintendent Willis, but say a kid decides to, um, there's a, there's a four-wheel cart in the hallway, and he decides at the high school he's going to take a spin on the cart, and he runs into a student, that student is injured, then that, that incident would now fall under this, because he didn't, the student didn't intentionally cause or attempt to cause this injury, but he or she recklessly caused it, correct? That, that's correct. That's correct. So, but it, that doesn't mean it's an automatic punishment. It means it comes up for review by the principal and then by you if necessary, correct? Thank you for raising that point. That's exactly what would happen. Okay. Shall I continue? 
I have a question before we continue. Right. So is most of this pulled from something that That's we obvious. legally have to comply with? Because uh, my reading of this may change beca because of that. So how much is pulled all, from somewhere? All the black is what is current. All the black is current. But I think Karen's asking, does this come directly from I'm just uh, trying Massachusetts to general what laws, yeah. et cetera? Because this code has been a